faith and he said, Lord, you just say the word and I know it's going to get done. What part does Jesus' life and death have to do with us? See, Jesus, he taught great things. He was a good ethical teacher. If you want to learn ethics, there's no better place to turn than, than, than to Jesus. But Jesus did not just teach ethics. Jesus lived, he taught, but then he was killed. And then he was resurrected. Look for a second in Luke chapter 24. After the resurrection of Jesus. Now remember his disciples had put all their hope in this person, Jesus. But Jesus then was killed, crucified by the most horrible means that the Roman could, could do to him, the most humiliating way of being put to death. And so a couple disciples were walking home after such terrible disappointment. Verse 13, Luke 24, 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? And you do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of the, our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is early, nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened scriptures to us? Why is Jesus' death and resurrection so important? Jesus fulfills everything the Bible talks about. We know that we can trust the Bible. We know that there is a kingdom that God has us set up. We know that God is marching us along to that kingdom because Jesus came, He died, and He was resurrected. And Jesus is now the one who sits in heaven and sits with you. Wherever you go, he goes ahead to prepare the way. Why is it that you know, you can know that what we do now 
will continue into heaven? How do you know that the works, the things that you say and speak will endure? It's because Jesus goes ahead of us and prepares the way. Whether we're nurses, mechanics, work in stores, what we do has import because we are part of a system that God has established. We don't work on our own. That's the importance of what Jesus does for us. Let us, every day, as you prepare to go out to work, say to yourself like, like, it, like he said here, he's gone before you. He has gone before you. Go and meet him there. When you go to work, say, Jesus has gone there before me. I go and meet him there and see, let's see what happens. When you go to school to see family, to visit people, when you go and visit those who are sick, say, Jesus has gone there before me. Let's go see what we can do. We're part of something way bigger than ourselves. That's what the Roman centurion recognized. That's what you and I can recognize. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we are connected with you. Jesus came and connected himself with us. He made us his brothers and sisters. What glory, what, what can we say? That we should be called children of God. And that's what you have made us. Thank you so much. Help us, Lord, as we, as we go places, as we see people, as we talk, to know that you've gone there before us and you're working with us.